I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi and today I have a puzzle for you. This position is the starting position, uh, but uh, the actual position we're going to see in a few moves because it's an opening puzzle. Uh, so this is from a real game, Mikhail Zolotukhin versus Edjo Scoutis. Uh, this is part of the match uh, Russia versus Latvia, which was the semi-final for the European Team Carcassonne Online Championships 2021 that finished a few days ago. Um, and uh, as we see, Reds, uh, Edjus is starting here and Mikhail is with the Green Meeple. And actually in this sort of puzzle, we will be looking at things from Mikhail's perspective, even though of course I was rooting for Red. Uh, but um, it was Green who actually managed to make a strong move. And this will be right here. So Reds naturally starts a two-point road with this tile. And now, um, as usual, I will give you several hints. So first of all, just study the position yourself. I mean, it's not very complicated. There's literally just six tiles on the board. And find the best, most ambitious move for Mikhail here, if you're Green. Pause the video. All right, if you found it, I think it clicked, but let me um, try out some options. So I think if you were considering all possible moves, and they're actually not many moves, there are literally only nine legal places in this position. Well, you know, um, this, 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 and this. So it's kind of just uh, one, two, three, four, five spots to turn and, you know, two orientations possibly. And of course, some of them come with the meeple and some with without, and that's also a choice that you will need to make. But the thing that you might be considering is this variable, very valuable tile, you got to recognize this, it has a road segment and a city segment on it. Um, and shielded tiles are usually good for completing cities. Like, make sure that these are your own, that there are completed cities. This, the, this is like the primary purpose of this tile. So, uh, you might have thought of just adding it to your own, own city. Like this, or like this, or like this. But the problem with that is it's not the most valuable move possible. So, let's see. If you do something like this, you're not really bringing your city close to, the, to completion. Uh, it still has, uh, well, you're adding the points to yourself. Yeah, you're adding two points to yourself. But you're also adding um, one point to your opponent's monastery, and you still need two, two more tiles to complete the city just as before, so you haven't really made any progress. And red still has this attacking square. So what might happen is that red might just grab a city cap, and then another triangle, and then share your city. And then, well, what did you gain as a result? You just built up red's monastery for nothing and then gave red the opportunity uh to um sort of share the city with tempo and they generally uh you got recognized that red is in a good position over here that this red me monastery meeple controls the green city meeple so whatever happens around this place whether it's blocking or whether it's um, joining or whether it's green completing the city by himself, red will benefit because his monastery gets built up as a side effect. A slightly better move is this, but actually it's still not ideal uh, well, for, the, for the same reason. You're, um, and yeah, this is also a decent move because you can also meeple this road actually, uh, just to make sure that red doesn't get a four point road. But still like, there is something better in this position than simply adding points to your city. So my hint will be that this move is not is not these three. It's not really a hint. I'm just like eliminating three moves. So it's not. So you have six more moves to choose from. All right. I hope you pause the video again. And my second hint will be uh, is that you might have thought, and that is like a good direction to thinking that you can just start a new city. It's it's a good tile to start a new city. Again, shields, shields are great. Um, well, you could start over here where it's sort of independent, but the problem with that move is that if your opponent gets a triangle, then he can block these two meeples very quickly against his one monastery meeple, and that will be a perfect situation for red. Um, 
Now you might start the city over here, but this is blockable with tempo, like red can just build up a road and then drop down another road to start attacking this. You could start the city over here, but the same reason, it's also blockable with tempo, albeit less directly, red can um, add a curve or a T-shaped crossroads to his road like this over here up top, and then um, start blocking the city with tempo. So my second hint will be, you gotta recognize as it's so often in opening, you know, you've probably, if you've played Carcassonne enough, you've been in situations where they're opening tiles that are like usually good, but they aren't just very good places to put them. And this is kind of situation, like they aren't really good places to start a new city. Just try to find a move that scores you as many points as you can. Just like be very greedy with this move and see what you can do. All right, I hope you pause the video again or solve this by now. Uh, I'll just add one final hint is that in this position, there's a move that is worth f basically five points, which is huge for one tile. Um, and um, even a potential for seven points in some scenarios, but like really five. Okay, you got it. So the move is this. Mikhail places this tile over here and meeples the road. And I think it's a very strong move that ended up um, doing a lot in the game. Well, first of all, three points directly. Great. That's actually, you got to recognize that with this tile, that really the maximum that you can extract at the moment. And also it makes sure that you're not leaving um, this shield lying around for your opponent because it's sort of indirectly attached to your city. Now, the indirectness problem is not a big deal because if your opponent, for example, with this, with this tile that they just drew, if your opponent uses a city cap and tries to join your city, then this spot is super vulnerable and then you can start a blocking attack on this spot and then block together your meeple and the opponent's meeple together with his monastery meeple. So your opponent will have two meeples block and you as green mole will have one meeple block. It's an excellent situation. So this means that red won't go um, to this part of the city and you will actually get to connect over here. Now, um, you might be thinking that it's harder to complete your city that way. But the thing is, it was already hard to complete the city. And it's something you got to recognize because, again, green is in this position where the red monastery meeple is controlling the green meeple. And what red wants to do is just red wants to make sure that everything over here is blocked and that green remains with two points. Uh, while red has seven points for an incompleted monastery with two block spots here and here. That's like what red would really like to do. But now you have an out to match this monastery meeple. So let's say if you draw any of the big tiles, um, I don't know, like a triple city, then you get to build a ruin over here in case this square uh, next to the monastery uh, on the right is blocked. And this ruin could grow like to seven or eight points uh, to match uh, the strength of um, this monastery. And you will get an advantage from this shielded tile as well without spending an extra move on building your city. So that's the main scenario. Uh, so actually, we've mentioned two scenarios. One is red trying to connect and, uh, and green blocking this. Uh, another scenario is uh, green building a ruin. And the third scenario, well, there's still some off chances of green still completing the city. It's doable as long as you don't try too hard, because if you like purposefully try to build the city with any tile, there's still there are two blocking spots or attacking spots. And once green adds a triangle, there will be another connection spot. And th this scenario, even though it's kind of far fetched, it can happen if executed properly. And this is actually exactly what happened in this game. So I just wanted to show that this move is powerful in my opinion because it sets you up for three different positive outcomes. And depending on the run out of tiles that you get, um, well, you can make one of these outcomes happen. So let's just have a look at what happened later in the game. We're not going to go through the whole game, I just want to show you some key positions. So, well, now red is making it harder to complete um, this city, so probably it's not something that green should be prioritizing, but, you know, it's never off the table until it's blocked. So let me just um, 
So now it's 59 tiles until the end. Loads of other things happening in the game, uh, which are sort of unrelated, but let me just go to a situation 18 moves later, 18 tiles later, we have this position. So the, nothing has changed about the city, um, really. Well, except that uh, this square was almost blocked, uh, and but now there's still two tiles that fit here. So there are actually some chances for green to complete the city. Still, this square is super vulnerable, and kind of if you try a lot to protect it, then you probably will end up losing this meeple just because if you protect this square, then... Um, you lose this square as well, it just will be very easily blockable. But it, this is why I wanted to show you an interesting thing. So Mikhail now gets a tile that fits over here. But because the city is still in a vulnerable position, completing it is not such a big priority, so he uh, postponed that for later because you know why? He wants to avoid a scenario where this city gets blocked, because this square is still vulnerable, and this monastery gets out. So, you know, if you have a block meeple, you better make sure that your opponent has a block meeple as well. That's what should happen in these situations. So, instead, Mikhail does something else with this tile and waits further. And now we're going to see a few moves later. Uh, and now you see Mikhail drew a tile uh, with which he scores two points. And this is the, the main purpose of the tile. Uh, he just scores two points, like that's what you use a crossroads for. But he also kind of pre-builds this city on the off chance he gets to connect over here. Yes, this square is blockable, but it's fine because red already got the benefit of this from this tile in the form of two points. And some equity, you know, um, in case this um, stuff is not getting blocked. And this is actually as you see what happens, but later comes another interesting move, just a couple of tiles after this. Yeah, check this out. Mikhail draws a tile that suits here. And many of you, you know, well, not many of you, but like, okay, many players. Ah, no, many of you as well. I'm, I'm sure somebody would do that. I hope there's, you know, many people watching and um, so many Carcassonne players uh, would place this over here and maybe even Meeple the Road. Actually, it's not such a bad move. But the reason why Mikhail didn't do that, again, he wants to avoid the same scenario. He wants to avoid a scenario where the uh, red meeple gets out. Oh, no, it's actually not possible. Yeah, basically, he wants to avoid a scenario where he spends such a valuable tile, uh, but, it, but it ends up cost, but it ends up like making zero difference because you're adding one point to yourself, one, one um, to your opponent. Because if red draws a straight road or something like this on his next move, uh, then this move will be basically useless. Well, this five point road is not bad, but Mihail just calmly takes four points in order to eliminate a city cap as well. So now there's only one tile that fits here, uh, but still this kind of was a far fetched outcome anyway. Um, so, okay, well, we'll see what happens next. Um, I guess we'll need to just look at some other aspect of the game as you see Mihail so, just wanted to show you, like, not the whole play is focused on the city, it's just one of the many aspects of this position, you know, there's this nine-point field, another field in a monastery, and now Mikhail started some blocking attempts, so it's not like a one thing that he does in whole position. And now check this out, he's he's waited for his right, right tile, and he gets to uh, keep the hopes of completing the city alive with uh, extra value, with tempo, so he just scores two points with the crossroads, and at the same time, um, saves the city. And, well, now it's an excellent position to be. And now that this has been secured, now he actually will be um, putting in stuff there. Because, you know, there is there is no risk of this city getting blocked. Although the probability is not great at the moment. So there's a 50% chance of getting this tile and one, two, three, and a 70% and a 75% chance of getting a tile that fits here. So this leaves us like a 37% a chance at best to complete the city. But still, I you know, 37, not zero. And uh, th these, this 
this 37%, this non-zero probability was created at no expense. That's the main point, because like Green here waited to do everything for the last tile. Remember, half the game has passed to finally get this situation where red, um, where blue, <laughs> blue, there's even no blue in situation. It's just kind of late as I'm recording this. Green, um, you know, gets to have an actual non-blockable situation with the city over here. And now, of course, now this is worth doing. Uh, so Mikhail won the coin flip, got the remaining tile, even starts a six-point road, which of course you have to do in this situation. And then, yeah, now there's a 75% chance um, of doing this. And then, uh, of course, Mikhail pre-builds a four-point road uh, because when he completes the city or if he completes the city, he will get this extra value in terms of four points. And um, yeah, in fact, as you may have predicted, this is exactly what, whoops, this is exactly what happens. So 10 moves after this, 22 tiles until the end of the game, basically all nearly 50 moves after that opening move in question that we discussed that Mikhail set up this possibility. He finally gets to complete a city with an extra value of four points, get a double benefit from that shield. So that tile gave him ultimately seven points, three for the road and four uh, for the city component. And um, he ended up winning uh, this game because this city, in fact, ended up being well, if not decisive, but contributed to um, his um, victory a lot. Let's actually just uh, have a look at the final score. So as you see, the difference is eight points, just the difference between a completed city and um, incompleted city. But the thing I want to show is was only one of the three scenarios and with this move at the start that Mikhail did, uh, he set up himself for multiple possible positive outcomes while also taking maximum point value in the moment, which is important in the opening. Um, let me know if you'd like me to review the whole game, although I kind of spoiled the end, so probably maybe it's better to do another game instead. Or if you have any questions about this position, maybe you disagree, maybe you found a better move. But other than that, two lessons. One is loads of value at the start of the game. And second is um, look to anticipate multiple positive outcomes, not just one. Um, like this video if you like this video. Um, subscribe to this channel for more puzzles, game reviews, and other kinds of competitive Carcassonne content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.